Well, this show is called Art Abilities, and it is the idea that I came up with that artists of all types have something within them to show what comes from within, it comes through their brains, through their hands, it's called creativity. And there, this show represents the artists that have either a mental or a physical challenge, and we are showcasing that in this show. And it will be up from no today, the end of November, through the month of December. And I hope that you will all come to see Art Abilities. I am a fiber artist, and I am standing next to a quilt that I made, basically, just from the time, just the la in the last month. Um, I am actually someone that has, suffers from both mental and physical handicaps. And I was in the hospital for two months because I have a, a bone condition that my bones break. I have artificial joints throughout my body. And uh, the last one was I had to have my ankle repaired. And I was in the hospital for two months repair because I couldn't walk, uh, not hospital, a rehab center. And so this one came to me to show this is my reality. I'm living with this reality, that I'm an artist. I can't stop being an artist. I just have to have challenges. Right now, my challenge is moving things around, you know, getting it under the sewing machine to get things around. But I think the colors and the abstract still shows my spirit. And this particular quote is called Living With My Reality because it just says I have to face what I have the challenges I have and still be creative. In addition to this quilt, I have other things. I also do felting, so there's fiber pieces. I brought some paintings. And so I have a few other things scattered around. I just took this one and put this because it's one of my larger pieces. I do community shows, community art shows, and the next show is going to be in March. And so the theme of that show is called Inspiration and it will be held at the Woodburn Library. So my next quilt is going to be something that inspired me to make a piece of art. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. I was an art teacher for 35 years, primarily elementary, but I also taught uh, as an adjunct at Wright State University for a time. And I was you know, very dedicated to working with children because their spirit is just so great when it comes to making art. But I found out along the way, they kind of influenced me. I love their colors, I love their wacky ways that they put things together. So I think, I think it was kind of a give and take, so to speak. So uh, that's where I will. And now I'm a complete fiber artist right now. Fiber art is, think of textiles, think of things that come from cotton, wool, whatever. And uh, you know, these are commercially made fabrics, but I also take plain fabrics and I dye them sometimes. I also do the felting, I've done some weaving, I've done all kinds of things. I just love textile things um, and tactile. That's one thing I want people to come out of this show. Think of the tactile experiences some of these artists have had. It's just really great. I do community shows throughout the Dayton area, and uh, I haven't done so many national shows recently, but I have in the past. And uh, I think that they can just look me up with my name and uh, see what I'm up to next. Kathy Jeffers Art Quilts and Mixed Media is my Facebook uh, professional one, and then I have my own. I just want people to come out with the open mind to think, wow, all of these people have these challenges and still they're creating because it comes from within and that's the beauty of the show. As a deaf child with language deprivation, I've been able to draw skillfully since I was three years old. It was literally my first language to try to connect with people. This artwork is a diorama of an art studio requested by Kathy for me to make for this gallery. I usually make fairy houses dioramas. As an environmentalist, I try to recycle and upcycle materials from everyday objects, 
laying around the house, neighborhood, as much as I can. This diorama of an art studio would be my dream art studio with ample natural light from the sun, with many windows, and skylight and big doors you can open. I've always liked high ceiling rooms that feel expansive. As I'm an advocate for ASL culture, there's a lot of culturally deaf themes tucked in various places inside. The small canvas of the I love you hand shape is quite a popular image. The U.S. Postal Service unveiled a new stamp honoring beloved Deaf Studies teacher Robert Panara. The image of this forever stamp shows Panara signing the word respect. I use this real stamp as a frame photo to honor him. I dedicate this diorama to my hearing service dog, Ziggy Sequoia. After struggling and dabbling in all forms of different mediums in art, due to visual processing disorder, dyslexia, and dyscalculia, as well as ADD, I discovered by accident, quite late in my life, around 2014, that diorama is the best form of art that makes me feel inspired and passionate as it's three-dimensional. My new best friend is a hot glue gun. It's equivalent to a magic wand. I also love tiny things and giant things in life. I love nature, animals, fairies, mermaids, fantasy types of themes, and yes, fairies are real. So I honor them, making fairy houses of all shapes and sizes. I will continue making fairy houses, thinking about fairy bird houses and art boxes. Eventually, I would love to go to different public stores, pubs, libraries, community gardens, and especially small business owners to see if they're interested of dioramas created for their stores. I'd imagine it would be a fun attraction to help them possibly draw in more customers as they check out cute and creative dioramas of their business. My email is deafhennaartist at yahoo.com. My video phone number is 970-373-5354. Ask for Raven Sequoia. Leave a message if I'm out of my office. I graduated from Wright State in 95. I've been doing art ever since. And, um, um, it's been all about either my family or um, like these were the most recent work. This was for an Ohio Arts Council grant. And um, so was that one the, on the other wall. So I got back into painting uh, and showing ever since the Art Council grant. I needed something to push me. It was the, um, it was 2018. Um, it was with the, um, the disabilities one. So um, for artists with disabilities. Um, it was based on my mental health and my recovery and working towards that. So these came out. Um, these came out of the pandemic. I was doing car engines because um, that was something I worked on my own cars as a single mom and it showed my resilience. So I started doing portraits. This is a self-portrait. This is one of my friends and that's my grandson with his um, stepdad. So um, it was um, very important to me to um, express the, how important I've um, gotten better with my um, mental health over the 20 years it's been a struggle. Uh, my medium, I, I, this one's oil, these are acrylic, and that one's oil. Um, I usually work in oil, but I started wanting to get faster at painting and getting more work produced, so I started experimenting with the acrylic. Some of my newer work is based on the car engines and went abstract with them, with, and I used Bondo on wood, um, old prints, some um, re, um, woodcut relief, because I'm a printmaker as well. So I took a graduate independent study to get my uh, knowledge back up for printmaking just last year. And um, so I've got these 
car engines that are layered, these drawings that I did that are layered, which are not in the show, unfortunately. <laughs> but the, this is what I wanted to focus on since it was working with my mental health and my uh, disability. So I wanted to focus on what I was doing for the recovery. And now I'm just focusing on um, going forward with uh, experimental art and doing the layers, the transparencies, the, the um, I was using modeling paste. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> I am applying, applying for a grant through Montgomery County, so I'm gonna see what happens with that. I was very honored with Kathy letting me um, participate, joining in. I, I feel like um, helping people with disabilities and lifting them up is important. I have, I'm on Facebook with Melia Galleries. You can also find me on my fine art of Maria Ma Ann McGinnis on Facebook, because I have two pa working pages. Um, MaliaGalleries uh, at gmail.com is my email. So I started drawing the car engines and then I started doing these car engine designs in the backgrounds of the figure. So I just kind of mix and match these drawings that I did to come up with these designs. This is probably a start of it, but this was before I was doing the car engines. This was, this was more, um, I decided to do a drawing of myself, portraits of myself, which I plan I want to do again because uh, the drawings in themselves were interesting besides turning them into a painting. So I'm thinking of doing a drawing show as well, just of self-portraits, you know, to get that interesting draw drawing. So we'll see what I can do with it. But the abstraction is where I'm going right now. Um, but that can always change because I jump back and forth. <laughs> I've been an artist almost all my life. As soon as I could pick up a pencil or a crayon, I've been drawing and painting and sculpting and writing and everything creative, uh, anything to express myself. Um, it wasn't until like the last couple of years where I was diagnosed with a chronic blood disease that I was able and given the opportunity to paint and draw full, full time. And that's why I'm here today. So I've got some acrylics on canvas and I went through this jazz stage and I'm still going through it. I'm not done yet. Um, we have Billie Holiday, we have Thelonious Monk, we have John Coltrane, and then we have Miles Davis over here. Um, and then these are just some other things just to show a bit of range. Jazz has always been inspirational to me and I just one day I was just like hanging around listening to some Coltrane and uh, went, wow, I started to see these things come to me. And, and I started, and I had different kinds of paint. I had pouring paint and acrylics, and I just started to like mess with the canvas, and I liked the results. And I said, this is good, I like it. So I did another one, and then I did another one. And I have some few more at home too. Sometimes I'm just, I can work for days, sometimes it's just a few hours. Working on some more paintings, but I'm slowing down a little bit. Um, I was really busy over the summer. I want to give my brain a break. Um, working on pen and ink drawings and a short animated film. I'm really flattered to be here. Like I said, this summer was really busy. I had, I just started to put everything out there. Any kind of competition, art show, Ohio Arts Council event, whatever it was, I just threw my stuff out there. I cast a wide net. And a lot of people like my stuff and it's great and cool and I'm super grateful for it. What a great time, it's Thanksgiving season, Christmas, to just be grateful for what I'm doing and, and, and to be able to show off my work.